This is the fifth video in the series, Becoming Well Read. And in this video, I will talk about one of the books I've recently read in an attempt to become well read. In this book, we will be talking about Different Seasons, written by Stephen King. Different Seasons was first published in 1982. Guys, I finished reading Different Seasons about two or three weeks ago. And it's actually a collection of Fort Shore stories, so we're going to deal with this in four parts. The first part being Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption was made in the movie called The Shawshank Redemption. And it's one of my favorite movies, and I'm glad I read the book. Uh, there were many differences between the two. In this book version, there were different wardens that changed over time. But in the movie, there was really just one warden. For the most part, the story went unchanged uh, from the book to the movie adaptation. But I really liked this story. And if you've never read like the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, the the jailbreak story, I think you would like uh, the Shawshank Redemption. What the Shawshank Redemption is more than anything else is a story of how lucky some people are. I mean, to be honest. Andy Dufresne was very unlucky to go to Shawshank since he didn't murder his wife or her lover. He was very unlucky in that regard. But in terms of how lucky he was in his escape and how lucky he was to get a room by himself in the corner, how lucky he was that, you know, for him, nobody ever found out what he was doing in all these years. I think that's like the feeling that you're supposed to get that sort of like uncanny feeling you know what I mean like wow his luck is really oh wow so that's mainly what I felt felt and that's probably my one of my top stories I think there's one more story in this book that I liked a bit better uh, than that the second story was apt pupil and this was my least favorite of the four apt pupil was about a young boy and an older man, and the older man was a Nazi, but he was living sort of undercover as a regular person here in America. And this young boy finds him out and uses the fact that the guy was a Nazi to get to old, the old this old man to tell him stories of the concentration camps and the horrible things they did. And the, the young kid's mind was corrupted, and the old man's mind was brought back to places where he really didn't want to be. Uh, but eventually, like... They both end up being killers, like serial killers of homeless people. And in the end, it seems like the young boy is going to be found out because something happens to the old man and he gets found out and everybody knows how like close they were. It's just very strange, a very strange book. It was also made into a movie. And so that's another thing. But to be honest, this was my least favorite and also the longest story in the entire uh, book of four novellas. So... The next story is The Body, and it's about four kids going to see a dead body, and if you've never seen the movie, it's called Stand By Me, and this is actually one of my favorite movies. Uh, Will Wheaton, the, the, that kid all the way to the left, actually uh, went on to play in Star Trek The Next Generation. Will Wheaton actually shows up a lot uh, to guest star in the show Big Bang Theory. Uh, but that's aside and different from the story. The story and the movies were very similar, very similar uh, for Stand By Me. I've never seen that pupil, so I can't compare those two. But they they were almost one for one. And I think, I, I don't know if Stephen King like had a say in what happened in the movie. But it seemed like it was one for one. And usually it's not like that. Usually there are substantial changes. Uh, but this is sort of like a coming of age story uh, where the four kids are going on an adventure by themselves in the woods to see a dead body that they had heard about on the radio because the radio was talking about this young guy this young boy who had died and they were looking for him and one of the kids older brother this kid right here Vern so actually he overheard him talking that the older brother had found the body and that's where they're going and different things happen to them on their journey uh, there's the leeches, there's the fact that they didn't bring food, so they have to, like, send someone out to get food, and they take a stop at the town dump, and the dog, which was, like, a legend, 
comes chasing after one of them. It's a very interesting story because you also get to see like the difficulties of childhood and uh, the way they interact with each other. I've never had such a tight knit group as they did um, in the story. It was interesting to read them and the, to see the way they interacted and to see the way they thought for uh, being at that point of life where you gotta, they were like sort of starting to make important decisions. Do I take uh, the regular curriculum in school or do I take like the curriculum for people who want to go to college? Things like that. It was uh, interesting. My favorite story in this collection of novellas is The Breeding Method. Now The Breeding Method I don't know if this was ever made into a movie, my god, but I liked it so much. The story of the library, not really that the story that they told in the li library of the breathing method, which is the Lamaze method, but the story of the club, which I, I call the library, but it's really like a club where people go and there's lots of books. Books that have never been published seemingly anywhere else before can be found here. And it's sort of weird. There's like no membership fees. The guy who's sort of like the caretaker or who runs the place, the concierge who grabs your coat, he seemingly does not age. And this place has uh, doors and doors and doors which lead to different places. And they never really say where all the doors lead to. I really hope Stephen King has written another story to elaborate more upon this library, this club where these guys go to have a good drink and to tell stories by the fireplace. Uh, that's sort of the main story, what's happening here. It's about this one guy, gets he works for a law firm, but he doesn't seem like that exceptional, so he doesn't think that he's going to get anywhere with his job, but he's comfortable where he is now. He's not like rich or the top tier, but you know, middle sort of person. And uh, he gets invited to this club by someone above him, and at first he doesn't want to go, he's like, whatever, he thinks he's going to be like of a different type of club, but this, when he goes, he sees that it's not what he expected. They don't take any names. There's no guest book or anything like that. And they have sort of this tradition of telling stories by the fireplace, you know, going to read the newspapers there or to uh, pick up a book and read some poems or uh, something different from an author you've never read before. And so, or maybe from an author you know well that a uh, story that has never been published or can't be found anywhere else. And... It sort of seems to me like uh, the tradition of the Christmas story, which is always a story of the uncanny, uh, is well regarded as, you know, a time where everybody gets together. This is like the one time where they actually tip uh, the, the waiter, concierge guy. I don't really know how to call him. I, um, again, I read this a few weeks ago, so I, I don't really remember well uh, what the St Stephen King, what word he specifically used to describe this guy. But this particular book, The Breathing Method, focused on one story that was told about this doctor uh, who had this young woman come in who was pregnant. She was pregnant out of wedlock and so basically she was looked down upon by society but she held herself with dignity and he basically taught her the Lamaze Method, the way to breathe during the different stages of childbirth to help uh, ease a woman's pain and give a woman a sense that she's in control and focus uh, to have the baby sort of in a safer way where you don't have to like scream or you know basic childbirthing stuff and so sometimes he said the Lamaze method works sometimes it doesn't but she really practiced it so much that when she uh, was in labor and she was going to the hospital something happened uh, right outside the hospital where she was decapitated and her body kept on breathing after being decapitated. It was like so used to the Lamaze method that it went through the entire thing and the baby uh, was birthed after and it was sort of strange like the head was still like alive doing the breathing motions too where you sort of telepathically tell your body what to do because you're like but head is separate from the body. Very strange, this book. But that wasn't the important part. The, imp the part I liked the most about this story was the library, the club. I want to hear more about this club. Uh, and so if you know if Stephen King has ever written about this club again, uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you've read this book, seen any of the movies, Stand By Me, Apt Pupil, uh, The Shawshank Redemption, 
um, let me know in the comments down below and we'll have a discussion. So for the next book I'm going to read, it's going to be Carrie by Stephen King. This was uh, the first book he's pub he published uh, way back in the 70s. And so if you guys are interested in reading along with me, this is the, what the next video will be about. And then when I post it, you could leave comments down below. We could talk and have a discussion about the book. Uh, kind of crazy book. Also, this is the fifth video in this series. And so I want to have sort of a tradition where every five videos I'll talk about one book which I recently added, purchased uh, for my collection. So here, we, here goes nothing. Because I've been on this Stephen King grind uh, for a little bit of time, I actually purchased one of his new books, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. And this is one of his more recent books. I haven't read recent Stephen King stuff, so I'm really interested in getting into this. And also, this cover with the butterflies is just amazing. I actually have a book um, here, Richard, written by Richard Dawkins, uh, The Greatest Show on Earth. It's about evolution, but the the... Excuse me while I pull it out. <laughs> the butterflies on the cover of this book, this sort of like foil cover, really remind me of the butterflies on this book. What do you guys think? It's very similar, right? Strange. Very soon I'm going to be reading this book um, as well. I also picked up another book which I normally don't do. I don't like to pick up books faster than I could read them and I have so many books in the backlog I've decided that every five books I'll pick up one. But this is an exception because this is a book I used to own that I've read a long time ago that I wanted to reread. Uh, I had lent it to somebody, never got it back so this is a repurchase of a book I used to own that I really wanted for my collection. It's also another Stephen King. Uh, Gerald's Game, and I used to own the hardcover. Unfortunately, the bookstore didn't have the hardcover. I had to settle for this. Again, uh, the next book I'm going to be reading uh, for just to talk about in a video is Carrie uh, by Stephen King. So if you have it, if you want to read it, read it along with me. Um, sometime, probably within the next week, I'll be posting that video because this book is not that long at all by any means. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.